that laser over there, that thing could be your best friend. I mean, B, F, F, and Fs. Or I give you the equipment rate calculator of doom. That's the whole deal. That's what's gonna dictate whether you've got paperweight or profit center. Running a fiber laser isn't just about sparks and speed. It's a business tool, and if you're not tracking what it costs to run, you're just playing shop. Guys, we all know that running a laser is not a game, and neither is running a metal fabrication shop, honestly. Everything down here is hard, hot, and heavy. It all plays for keeps. I mean, this press brake, the laser, the saws, the cutoff wheels, everything we use is trying to separate metal from metal. It's gonna have no problem with your fingers and toes. So buying a laser or getting your first laser is a really serious commitment because a laser can chew up your budget faster than your wife when she asks if you have any cash in your wallet. Okay, so we're, I think we're almost done with three, right? Yeah, then, can I have some cash? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, how much you need? Um, pretty much whatever you got. What do you mean? How much you need? Well, I don't know yet. What are the pins? All right, there you go. Thank you. And you know what I'm talking about. Every single cost you have involved in a piece of equipment, we're gonna go through right now. This calculator works for any piece of equipment. I'm using a laser because A, I sell lasers. If you guys want a laser, talk to me, I'm your guy, I got lasers. It's not mutually exclusive to lasers. Any piece of equipment, you need to be running these numbers on to understand what your true costs are. I give you the equipment rate calculator of doom or glory depending on what you're into. I'm into glory, honestly, but doom just seems to creep up on me from time to time. So we've got our equipment. Let's start with, of course, what does all this stuff cost? So a three kilowatt fiber laser from Hero Machine Co. Check us out. It's gonna set you back 80 grand for our open bed model. You're also gonna need an air dryer, which is gonna set you back anywhere from 800 bucks to 2,000. I put 2,000 in here. Air compressor, you're gonna need a dedicated air compressor, 4K, or if you get a big screw compressor that can feed your whole shop, then you'll do a percentage of that air compressor and not the whole thing. But you guys definitely wanna have all of the equipment required to run that piece of equipment. Um, but we're not talking consumables, just hard equipment, something that plugs into the wall or connects to. We're not into consumables or coolant or lenses or anything like that. So uh, you also need a transformer to uh, transform that power to 380 volts. No one in the US has 380, that's what we make the machines in. Sorry, not sorry. Then you're gonna have to have a separate PC. We just put a thousand bucks in there. So grand total, you're looking at a hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment to get laser cutting. And we're breaking that down into a monthly loan payment. So monthly loan payment divided by the number of hours worked. We run our laser full time, so I'm booking 40 hours a week on that thing, sometimes 60, so it's pretty easy for me to do this math. If you guys have partial utilization, you're gonna need to divide that monthly payment number by the actual hours that the machine is running. Or you can try and future-proof yourself and bid the equipment as if it was running full time because the cheaper your price is, the more often you're gonna have that machine booked. And if you're not pricing it as if it's booked all the time, it's harder to get it booked all the time, if that makes sense. So um, if you're running this thing full time, that's gonna be $11.14 per hour that's going to your laser payment and all the equipment payment as well. Everything it takes to run that thing. So then we get into consumables. So consumables are twofold on a fiber laser and probably a lot of situations like that where you have, if you're machining, you're gonna have some coolant costs on top of your tooling. Uh, so you need to take that into consideration. I broke it out. We've got consumables up here. We're running about 50 cents an hour. That's a little high, but that's a really safe number. We're trying to go high here, We're trying to figure out what all of our potential costs could be. This is not the time to really skimp on the numbers. You want to leave some of these a little bit fat so you have some, some room for error. Like, subscribe, do all the things. The channel's starting to build a little bit here. I'm getting subscribers. It's really, really cool. And I'm excited to take you guys on this journey. Then we get into shielding gas. If you are cutting thin stuff, anything under quarter of an inch, your cost is really gonna be zero. You're just gonna be using shop air. That's gonna be covered in all of this stuff over here, the air, the dryer, all that stuff we put in. But if you're cutting thicker material on oxygen, you're gonna be spending about $2 an hour. If you're cutting uh, stainless or aluminum, high dollar stuff brass, you're gonna be running nitrogen shielding gas and that's gonna cost you up to $20 an hour. So 
I factor the rest of this in at zero. We do most of our cutting on shop air, even stainless, especially when we have to repolish the edge anyways. There's no point in spending more on gas and we already have the labor costs later down the line, but that's our gas cost. Then we've got our labor, which if you go to my last video, which is the shop labor calculator, which is the formula for this, you guys will understand this very well. If not, please go check that out. It's a really useful video and it all builds to the final video in this series, which is how to price and bid work. So you're gonna need to see that before any of this really makes sense. But this is our hard labor. This is not our marked up labor because at the end here, we're gonna mark this up again. So you don't have your you know, $100 an hour shop rate in here. This is your hard cost of your labor, consumables, insurance, rent, all that stuff is in this number. But just don't mark that one up yet because we're gonna do it again here at the bottom. Then we've got maintenance and repairs. I'm throwing $3 an hour in here. This is your annual maintenance cost or monthly maintenance cost. Monthly tends to fluctuate a lot more because you'll have some big breakdown, something will happen, you'll have to replace something, and then you'll be running fine for nine months and it'll show a zero. So you don't wanna pick one of those zero months, you don't wanna pick one of those expensive months, you want a, an average. So if you can get at least six months, but a year is, is really the gold standard here. So you're gonna take a year of your maintenance costs and you're gonna divide it by the number of hours that machine was running, not the number of hours total in the year because we're you know trying to pay for utilization. That gives me $3 an hour. That's basically six grand a year. Um, that's high, but like I said, I like to pad these numbers and keep these high. So I always have enough money to make repairs and maintenance. Uh, I never want to be out of money when it comes to repairing that machine and putting it back in. So I make sure I keep a little savings account going here. $3 to every hour goes to repairs and maintenance. Um, then we've got our rent calculation. If you watch the shop labor video, you'll see that we already collected rent on all of our working labor hours. So this is actually a double dip for us, which I don't mind double dipping, especially if the piece of equipment can support it. It's you know more money to the bottom line, whether it goes to rent or into savings or to buy another piece of equipment, you can totally charge for renting in here. I would really love it if you would drop a comment in below, be brave and give us what your shop rate is or your equipment rate for your laser. Let us know what power it is um, and how much you're charging per hour and also what area you're in. That's really important because major metro areas can charge more, uh, small rural areas can charge less, higher power lasers get more money than lower power lasers, so on and so forth. Even a plasma table rate would be super helpful for the guys in this video. I know you guys are running shops, I know you guys have equipment, and I know you're doing the same thing that I'm doing every day, and that is trying to make a freaking living out here. So if you could help us all out by participating a little bit, that would be rad. So basically we took the square footage that the machine utilizes, and that's basically how much square footage it takes up in the shop, the square footage that the air compressor takes up, the air dryer, the PC, there's a little workstation there. Total floor space is about 350 square feet at a rent rate of about $2 a foot. That gives us $4.38 an hour to rent. Then we've got our utility cost. This is total utility cost. This is all the electricity it takes to run all those pieces of equipment that are required for laser cutting. It's not just the laser itself. This is the laser resonator, the servo packs that drive the gantry around, the compressor motor, the air dryer compressor motor, all those things together, $2.38 into rent. Sorry, utilities, we already did rent. $2.38 in rent, or I keep wanting to say rent, I don't know why. I guess we're renting the electricity because it just returns back to ground and then we recycle it over and over again. Green Piecers would be really happy about that. Uh, depreciation, okay. Depreciation is kind of a sticky one. So depreciation is brought up a lot, but really what you're doing is you're keeping track of the value of the machine. So if we bought $100,000 worth of equipment and it ex we expected it to last five years, which is short, that's shorter than this stuff should last, but we're using five years because it gives us good depreciation numbers for taxes and whatever. So over that five years, that $100,000 laser, in the second year, if you were gonna sell it and default on that loan, how much could you sell it for? So let's say after year one, you could sell that piece of equipment for $80,000. Then the next year you could sell it for $60,000, then 40,000, then 20,000. Then finally the thing is totally used up, worthless. You can't sell it for even scrap value. Now you're fully depreciated and the value of that asset has gone down on your books 
which starts to matter for stuff like taxes. But how I like to think about depreciation is it's a savings account for my next piece of equipment, right? So this payment right here is paying for the equipment that's already in the shop. This depreciation number is what the replacement is going to cost. So I took this $100,000 total and divided it by the number of hours that I figured that thing would survive, right? Before I was ready to upgrade and move to the next one. And when I get to this next piece of equipment, I want this laser to pay for the next laser. I don't wanna keep going into that debt loop and going back into debt into the bank. This next laser, I wanna buy it in cash. So you have to start a savings account for yourself. And that works out to $10 an hour over five years. So if you start charging this $10 an hour and socking it away, by the time this piece of equipment is totally used up and depleted, you will have the money sitting in your bank for another laser. If you don't have a laser payment, if you bought it cash in the first place, you absolutely have to work in this depreciation number, if not both. If you bought it cash, yeah, you're getting out of the interest here, which is that difference between $10 and the 1114, that's just interest payments you're making to the bank, but that $10 is your principal, and you absolutely need to collect that because you're gonna need another laser once that one wears out. And honestly, the lasers are always worth something, so you can definitely sell them, but then you'll have that whole chunk of cash there ready to go. And then second to last, we've got insurance. What does the liability coverage require from your insur insurance company on that piece of equipment? We've got $1.50 an hour, insurance is really expensive, it sucks, but you gotta have it in case something catastrophic happens. We are now, Nashville, they're considering in the new Tornado Alley, so we gotta watch out for tornadoes. The business park across town uh, totally got hit two years ago, and four businesses got completely wiped out. So we're not far from that. There's nothing that says it couldn't happen to us. We gotta pay our insurance. Just a little Hero Machine Co. update. I'm really excited. I've got two new lasers coming over on the shipping container right now, a two kilowatt open bed, and it's 12 kilowatt fully enclosed with the exchange table. I've got a 80 ton press brake with a five foot bed that I'm testing. If the press brake is high quality and it can keep up with us here in the shop, I'm gonna start offering press brakes for sale too because nothing goes together like press brakes and lasers. I mean, maybe peanut butter and jelly. But aside from that, I've also got 12 plasma tables from 4x4s all the way up to 5x10s, a couple of screw compressors, and we're going to be running through all this equipment here in about four weeks. So I'll keep you guys updated when that lands and show you guys all the latest and greatest laser technology, all the new stuff. I've been really kind of hanging on to my shorts here, not trying to share too much because the stuff's not here in my shop yet. I went over to the Philippines and to China and worked out the entire supply chain. There's a whole video on that as well too if you guys are curious about how these machines get made and the process that I went through to make sure that we have really high quality stuff that is also affordable. It was a, a huge project, took me about three years to put together, but that's what's put us here today as Hero Machine Co is this new approach of being hands-on with overseas manufacturers instead of just placing orders on something like Alibaba and hoping and praying for the best. Insurance, we covered. Taxes, taxes, I hate taxes. I don't know why taxes just irk me sometimes, but you gotta pay to play. Our county has a special, um, I forget what they call it. It's basically an equipment tax. So they tax me on 1.8% of 30% of the book value of my equipment. So that works out to cost of the equipment times 0.3, 30%. Then you take that and you multiply that number by 0 0.018, and that gets us to 27 cents an hour, goes to the tax man, just for the permission of having that piece of equipment on my shop floor and creating jobs and paying payroll taxes, income taxes, property taxes, all sales taxes, on top of all that, I get to pay a special equipment tax. So if you've got one in your municipality, you better put that sucker in here because it's important. Finally, we get our total. So this is what a laser is going to cost you. Hard costs, all of the costs. Every hour, $84.73. So from here, we get to do the fun stuff, right? Now we get to start calling around, seeing what other people are charging, figuring out how much we can mark this thing up. And spoiler alert, three kilowatt fiber laser in Nashville, Tennessee collects $220 an hour every single day, every hour that I've owned that thing. So 
my margin on a laser, let me pull out my handy dandy calculator here, we've got our 220 minus our hard cost of 84, 73, 135, 27 every hour in the wallet, right there. Lots of folded money. So these things are absolutely profit centers. Don't let anybody fool you. If you can fill up a laser, even half of your day, the thing is not only gonna pay for itself, it's also gonna put money in your pocket. And I just wanna to touch on this labor number. I forgot to add that in. When I'm talking labor, you're gonna have a machine operator. So some people make the mistake of just calculating the cost of the equipment, but if the equipment takes an operator to run it, that's not collected somewhere else in your calculations, you better put every single operator required into this labor number. So if it takes two people to run this laser or a piece of equipment, I'm gonna double this number. If it takes you know, three people, triple the number. If one person can tend to two pieces of equipment, you're gonna divide that number by two because they're splitting their time and you're only gotta pay for half that labor on that piece of equipment. But don't forget to collect the labor of the person running the machine in this equipment calculator. It'll make sense in the next video. Really hope that helped you guys out. That is the equipment rate calculator in a nutshell. Any piece of equipment, any place you're at, all those numbers work for every single situation. So understand your hard costs, then work on your markup by calling around, seeing what other people are charging, and also just pulsing the market. Just keep raising that rate until you stop winning bids, and then scale it down a few notches and see where you're at. Because if you're too busy, you're too cheap. Once again, hit subscribe, like, follow along and check out here at machineco.com if you guys are interested in any metalworking piece of equipment, plasma tables, lasers, press brakes, we got it all.